The internal world is like a stage on which your life plays out. It has a script. It has characters. You're the main character. The main character is the one whose view you see through. And the other characters on the stage are somewhat interchangeable, but their scripts are already assigned. The storyline is playing out in a somewhat stereotyped way. Sometimes this feels awkward. Other times it feels reassuring. This internal world, the world of thoughts, can make us feel like we're in control. It can make us feel like we have some influence on the outside world. And when we feel in control, it makes us feel good. But at other times, the storyline doesn't seem to go on script. Things don't go how we want them to or how we expect them to. And then we feel out of control or we fear that we may not have any control at all. The fear that we maybe never had control is so unsettling that we get to work rewriting the script. We try to write in the new events and sew it together with the old script, convincing ourselves that we truly are the stage manager, the director of this internal experience. And that can make us feel better for a time, a little bit more in control, until inevitably the play takes another turn, an unexpected turn. And so we just go about the business again of rewriting the script, thinking more convincing ourselves we have control over things we don't have control of. And we start feeling more and more distanced from life. This is suffering. This is what brings us to spirituality or to the drive to awaken. This is what gets us seeking. And we can't help but seek in the story because we've taken up residence here years before. So we seek in the story, but occasionally we'll bump into a character who has a different way of pointing and points us directly out of the story, tells us that maybe we're not even the stage manager, which can be scary to hear. But then they tell us we're not even on the stage. Even the stage is an illusion. And this may resonate with something deep, some part of us that we feel like we've forgotten. So we investigate in the best way we know how. And at first we investigate in thought. We start looking at the script in a different way, maybe rewriting it in a different way, or we stop writing it all together. And then our new friend tells us, it's not quite like that. There is no script writer. There's not even a script. There's no stage. It's not actually happening. So again, we feel a bit of peace with this message, but we don't know where to look. We don't know how to conduct ourselves. Even relaxing feels like work. So then we start to look into our identity. Well, who am I then? If I'm not all these thoughts, if I'm not the script, and I'm not even the script writer, where can I look for truth? Where can I look for who I am, for identity? If I'm not the stage manager and I'm none of the characters, where else could I possibly look? Because that's the story I believe. That's the story I believed for so long. And then you start to feel something different, something peaceful, something that no matter what happens on that stage, it's undisturbed, unmoved, imperturbable. You can feel it for a moment. And then you find yourself back on the stage, trying to write the script again. And then you remind yourself, oh, more thoughts. So you start to relax again. Or your obsession with the story calms down enough that you start to sense what it means to not even be on the stage, that there maybe is no stage. There's no story, no script, no characters, but there's something here, something vast, 
something profound, something infinitely deep, without boundaries, something that doesn't need direction and doesn't need a director, something that's not divided into characters, that's not divided into acts, that doesn't need a script writer, that doesn't have to follow any script at all because it's totally free. And you wonder, could that be? Could that be where identity really lies in that freedom? In that wondrous aliveness? You don't know where to find it, but you sense it's already here. You sense in some way that you don't have to find it. You just acknowledge it in the right way. And then you start to lose interest in that script and the characters. And you become fascinated with what's right here. Because this that you've discovered, this freedom, is only right here. When we look not anywhere else, not into the future or past, not into thoughts, not into concepts, then we can't miss it. We can't miss this freedom because the freedom is indeterminate. It's infinitely potent, unfolding at all times, crystal clear, and yet we can't talk about it. We can't define it. We can't write down what it is, but we don't need to because it's everything. And it's even better than everything. It's not limited by being everything because it can also be nothing at all and everything in between. It's all the shades. It's all the splendor of aliveness. And it's the deep, deep peace of silence. This is what we've come for. So the way to inhabit it is to just see you were never a character on a stage in that internal world. That's just a tangle of thoughts. And even thoughts are fine. Just remember, you're not the director. You're not the stage manager. There's no stage. Those thoughts are reflections. Reality's here and only here. And you don't need to acquire it. You don't need to wake up to it. You don't need to find anything. Just inhabit this.